Hello, everyone. Tom Nappy here with Caden Boyce and Cassie White, the captains of this year's Hopkinton Hillers girls volleyball team. Caden and Cassie, how are you? Good. How are you? Excellent. Well, you uh, just completed the first week of regular season games. Two very impressive wins against Holliston. How's everything going so far? How are the practices and how are the games? Caden, we'll start with you. It's going really good. It's good to see our team working really well together. We're all upperclassmen, so we're really close. And um, starting our season out with two wins is really impressive. So I'm proud of our team. That's terrific. Cassie, how's everything on your end? Kind of same as Caden said, I feel like we have a lot of experience. There's just a lot of leadership, like everyone works together already. So it's looking good. All right. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, how long you've been playing volleyball? Do you play any other sports? And uh, do you plan on playing anything in college? Uh, we're all curious about that. Caden, we'll start with you. Um, so I've been playing volleyball for a while, um, three or four of my sisters played for Margie when they were in high school. So I've always grown up watching their games. But I officially started in sixth grade at um, Coach Grabmeyer's Saturday Clinics. And so, yeah. Terrific. Cassie, how about yourself? Uh, do you uh, just play volleyball? How long have you been playing? And do you play any other sports? I started a little later. I started playing just in the backyard with like my neighbor right before eighth grade tryout. So that's when I started. I made that team and then I played club freshman and sophomore year. That's where I like really got into it. And then I also am on the swim team. I'm doing that right now along with volleyball. So it's been a bit busy, but um, I've done that all four years as well as volleyball. Terrific. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this year's team? How's the camaraderie and, uh, I know there's a lot of new faces on this year's team from last year, and obviously you're playing in very different months from where the season typically is. How's everything going, and uh, what do you think about this year's team? Uh, Cassie, we'll start with you this time. I feel like it's going good. Like we like said, it's all upperclassmen. There's a bunch of juniors, and then there's the seniors, which we're all already comfortable with each other. Um, and I just think even though things have been a little different, different time of year, there's no fans, can't high five, things like that. Like it's not, I don't think it's affecting us as much as, I don't know, we're not, we're just not letting it like really get in the way of our play. And I feel like we're doing a good job at still being close together and communicating. So it's going good. Terrific. Caden, uh, what are your thoughts on this year's team? How's everything going? It's going good. I totally agree with Cassie. Um, we have great new additions, a middle and a right side, and some back row defensive players, and they're looking really strong. So um, I'm super excited to continue working with them. So has uh, I know it's a different time of year that you're playing this season. Has it been um, difficult to adapt in any way um, with playing at this time of year, or is it feel pretty much the same obviously there's no fans and there's all the COVID-19 stuff but how's it playing at this time of year and whoever wants to answer first can just jump in um I at first when I re was reading this question I was thinking to myself like it really isn't a big difference but then I thought more about it when we normally start like last week of summer right before school starts you're really excited because you haven't like seen most of the girls all summer um so that like makes it I feel like a lot more exciting, not like it's not exciting now, but I just feel like there's a little bit of like a different feeling of like eagerness, like really isn't there. We've been in school and been seeing all these, all our teammates. So um, it's a little different, I think. Caden, how about from your end? Uh, how is it playing at this time of year? Has it been a big adjustment for you? It hasn't been too bad. It's definitely a little different, like Cassie said, but we're all getting used to it. And I think, um, it actually helps us in some ways that we've been already seeing each other in school and stuff. So we've become even closer with this little bit of delay. So that's terrific. And uh, obviously it's difficult with the COVID-19 conditions. I know there's probably like team dinners and team activities and all that kind of stuff. And some of it probably got altered, but how's your uh, camaraderie been with your teammates uh do you feel like that it's a close-knit group this year and anybody can just jump in 
I feel like it's close knit for, you know, being all upperclassmen. We're not necessarily all in the same friend groups or anything like that, but I feel like we just all come together and have fun during practice and working together and like playing as a team, not, you know, playing as one is like been, it's been really smooth. Yeah. I think we're all just super excited to be here and um, regardless of the situation of this year. So I think that has helped us too, because we're all in the same spot. We all just really want to be here every day at practice. So we really enjoy the time we have together when we do. And I feel like that's been the theme of this year. It's obviously you don't have the playoffs. Some teams are playing at a different time of year. Some sports have different rules, but I think it's just about getting out there and getting the athletes out there and playing the sport you love. Am I right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So I ask every uh, athlete that we interview this because I think if I was playing a sport, I'd have a very difficult time with this. But how is it playing with a mascot? It must be a burden. Have you gotten used to it yet? I've gotten used to it for sure. We did, some of our team did the MGA league in the fall. And so we've gotten used to that and with school wearing masks every day. But it's definitely a little bit difficult. Um, I catch myself out of breath a little more than I <laughs> do usually at practices. But. Cassie. Yeah, same, same as Bob. I mean, we've... A lot of the girls, since it is like, you know, end of winter, a lot of the girls have been doing club or we've done different clinics. So like we played in the masks by now a bunch of times, but it's just not the best thing getting all sweaty in them and sometimes breathing's hard, but thank God we don't do a, a lot of running. So it's not the worst thing ever, but we've adjusted. And I'm no doctor, but you're breathing in your own carbon dioxide and those things. It's not the healthiest thing in the world, but unfortunately, we got to do it right now. And I'm glad that you mentioned Caden Boyce's nickname, Bub, because I've been meaning to ask, Caden, how did you get that nickname, Bub? Well, it's kind of a funny story. I named myself that when I was four. I was with my sister, Cecily, and at the time, I was really little, so I called her Bubbles, and I was like really wanted a nickname similar to hers and she was teasing me she was like well we could call you like bob or something but i was like no like bub like short for bubbles so like since then like t some teachers family and friends like all my sister's friends like all know me by bub so it's just kind of stuck do you like it is it okay if people call you bub oh of course <laughs> i think it's a great nickname Good. yeah uh, so you've played, uh, you both played uh, two games against Hallison so far, two great wins, uh, two shutout wins. Uh, what are your thoughts on the first two games you've played so far against Holliston? And uh, what are some of the things that the team did great? And maybe if there's anything that the team needs to improve on going forward, you could tell us about that. Uh, Kaden, we'll start with you for this one. Um, like I said, I'm really proud of the team for our first two wins. I think, at least for me, I think everyone had a little bit of jitters, but um, disregarding that, like, we uh, performed very well, and I'm very proud of everyone for that. And I think if we continue what we're doing and um, get rid of some of the unforced errors, I think we're really going to go far this season. Cassie, how about you? What are your uh, thoughts on the first two games? I agree with what Bob said. I think – we're just, we had a little bit of jitters. I feel like, especially at yesterday's game, it was home. There was our parents there and stuff like that. So it made it a little bit more nerve wracking. There was some unforced errors, but like the energy overall, just working together. I feel like we've already been doing a great job at that. And I, I think we're going to carry that out through the rest of the, the games. That's terrific. Well, it was two impressive wins against a uh, very competitive Holliston team. And you got a lot of great opponents coming up. Now, looking at your schedule, is there anyone that isn't on that schedule that you would like to play that you typically play? And anyone could jump in for this one. Yeah, for sure. We would love to be able to play Barnstable. They are um, oh, super fun match. to play them when we do every year. Uh, so that's definitely a little bit sad, but it's all right. Cassie, how about you? Yeah, Barnesville is definitely a team. And then also just in general, being able to play all these different towns and tournaments that we would normally have on the weekends. We obviously don't have those this year. So that's a big loss, but at least we're having a season. 
Absolutely. It's all about getting out there this year. And trust me, we are all missing the playoffs. That is our favorite thing to cover here at HCAM. That's for sure. We, we love covering the volleyball playoffs in every playoff, but uh, the volleyball team always has a great playoff run. So uh, what are your uh, personal goals for the season? Is there any specific skill set that you want to work on or anything that you would like to achieve? Uh, Kaden, we'll start with you. Um, yeah, for sure. We outsides, Melanie and I have been practicing hitting line and I think that can really help us this season if we can execute that and coach has been teaching us about that. So that's one of the goals for me and just continuing to be energetic and trying to be a leader on the team and being present in the moment and forgetting about any mistakes you made in the past play and just move forward. And I think that'll be really beneficial. Terrific. Uh, Cassie, how about you? What are some of your uh, personal goals this season? Also to just be positive president or president on the court, but also just like helping other teammates and being a leader and doing the same for them. If you can see that a teammates like down or, you know, not having the best game, it's like lifting them up. That is really going to overall help just the overall energy. But then also, yeah, just we've been – I feel like a big team goal that we've been working on a lot in practice is utilizing our middles because they always shut it out. They always get kills. So I've been doing that. But as a right side, I think the right sides also are focusing on hitting line, um, hitting off the blocks, kind of utilizing that. So kind of the same. That's terrific. Um so uh, what are your thoughts about Coach Grabmeyer? And no one's listening, so you can be honest. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. But uh, what are your thoughts about Coach Grabmeyer? She's had a lot of success in her career. Uh, are you having a good time working with Coach Grabmeyer? Uh, Kaden, we'll start with you. For sure. I've known her for a while now, and um, my sisters really appreciate her um, as a coach, and she's took um, this program very far, and so – um, caps to her for that and I think she um, uses drills in our practices that are really beneficial to us like um, base shift balance to transition quicker and I think that's really helped us in our first two games. Terrific. Cassie? Same thing as Bob. I think she's just so dedicated to the team especially you know driving every day from the Cape that's obviously dedication right there and then also she takes time to take our stats from practices and games and shows us what we need to work on and gives us different things to work on in practice that will carry on into the game. So yeah, I think coach is a good role model. That's terrific. And um, I'm curious, we had this COVID-19 lockdown. Everybody was stuck in their homes. What are some of the things that you did during this uh, COVID-19 lockdown when everybody had all this extra time? Cassie, we'll start with you for this one. My main thing was I started to run because before <laughs> quarantine, I was just, I couldn't run like over a mile, but um, with all the extra time, I just started to run outside and on the treadmill. That was like the main thing. And then just hanging out, chilling out. There you go. Well, I'm sure uh, coach Grabmeyer will be happy to hear that you uh, worked on your uh, cardio there and got ready for the season. Uh, Kaden, how about you? What are some of the things that you did during the, uh, COVID-19 lockdown? Similar things. I spent a lot of time with my family. Um, my sisters were with us for a um, good few months and my dad bought a net so I could do some outdoor lessons. So I've been doing that in the summer and um, stuff like that, socially distanced with my club coach. So that has been a great help to me for preparing for the season. Well, that's terrific. And we are excited about this year's team. Excited that you're 2 0 to start off the season. Uh, Caden Boyce, Cassie White, the captains of this year's Hiller Girls volleyball team. Ladies, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, we're going to turn to Coach Grabmeyer next. You can stick around if you want and uh, listen to that interview, or you could take off. But thanks so much, girls. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, so we got Coach Grabmeyer joining us right now. Coach, how are you? How's everything going? It's good, but I'm so happy to be able to see these girls' faces because we they've been masked the whole time I've seen them the last, you know, since volleyball started. So I almost forgot what they looked like. It's good <laughs> to see them. Absolutely. And you, 
you know, in my preference, I like doing interviews on Zoom right now because I, I prefer to interview somebody without the mask. I just think it's better to, you know, number one, hear what they're saying because it's tough talking yeah. through those things. But of course, uh, you want to see the faces as well. Uh, so, Coach, speaking of the masks, how is everything going with the masks as far as practices? I know it's an adjustment. Uh, and obviously, you got to wear a mask during the practice and during the games. How's that adjustment been for you? I find it's really hot wearing the mask. I, I think I give credit to the athletes because they're, I thought it was going to be a lot harder for them to do than they seem to be making it just like another part of the uniform. And I don't, I feel like they're, they haven't missed a step. Um, I think it might be hard. I don't like being able to not being able to see their faces so I can see reactions and be able to read people. I can't anymore. You know, I just have to assume everything is going well unless they stop and tell me. Um, but other than that, I mean, they're great at they're They haven't, like I said, they haven't missed a step. So when you're, uh, yelling stuff from the sidelines or, you know, trying to get the strategies out there, has it been difficult at all w with that mask on? A little bit. I feel like it's muffled. Like you're, you're constantly like this. Can they hear me? Charlie Brown's teacher type of a situation. But then I thought, Maybe they were never listening to me anyway. So what's the difference? I'll just, you know, roll. Oh, come with on. It. You've, you've won a few state championships and they know what got they're all doing. these great playoff runs. I think they're listening to you. They're, they're smart players. They know what they're doing. Honestly, game day coaching is pretty much non-existent. They go into the game knowing what they're doing. So. Absolutely. It's been a tremendous squads this, uh, throughout the years, uh, that you've been coaching Hiller's girls volleyball. Uh, can you talk about the team this season? How's this group? How are they adjusting? You, you lost some great players from last year due to graduation, but how's this group this year? We always do. It's kind of like the Patriots way, like next, next man up. <laughs> That's kind of what how uh, can volleyball <laughs> is. They're they're, I don't know. It's a strong team this year is all juniors and seniors. So I feel like they're coming into it um, with a lot of experience and just a lot of confidence. I mean, there's, they all know what they're doing. They're all perfectly capable. And I, I have a little bit of a larger roster this year than I normally would have, but at the same time, um, I'm finding out that it's a good thing we do because you never know when someone might be sick or might need to take a couple of days off. And, um, and it's nice having, that many players, as long as I can, you know, figure out a way to make it worthwhile for everyone that we're getting, you know, some playing time in there when, when I can, um, I think that I like having this roster and, and everyone is just a great attitude. So that makes me happy too. They, I feel like everyone's the, the word this year for this season is grateful. I feel like everyone's just happy to be on the court because we might not have been. You I know, that's so many seasons have been postponed. Right. And that's one of the things that I've been saying throughout a lot of these sports shows and a lot of these interviews we do that you don't have the playoffs this year. You don't have the same amount of games even this year in a lot of sports, but I think it shows the importance of just getting out there and playing the sport you love this year, because you might not be fighting for a trophy, but you at least get to go out there and play with your teammates and do the sport you love. And I think it, it's true. You know, there's been a lot of bad stuff with this pandemic, but I guess one of the good things is it has showed how important even just playing games are. We have, um, so we have scheduled 11 matches so far this season and I'm just, you know, fingers crossed that we can make it through every single one of them. Um, did that you guys didn't touch on like fun Fridays, did you? No. What's that? So that's what, that's one of the things, like you're saying, I just feel like, um, having a chance to play the game that you love, and this is a different season and we're not preparing for, um, tournament runs. And, you know, we don't have the conditioning Saturdays that we would normally have because it's a short little five week season and we're not playing all these tournaments. And so Fridays are our fun practice days where you pull out the music and pick the they're still playing volleyball and they're still drills and they're learning things, but it's a different feel. So it makes it, it's fun for me. I think it's fun for the players too. Um, 
Well, so, talking to Kate and Cassie, they seem like they always have fun at practice. Good. <laughs> good. And uh, we just spoke hard. with them. Can you tell us a little bit about this year's captains? We know they're very skilled. They're very talented. How have they been to work with? Um, they're excellent to work with. I mean, they, it's a joy to come in. And these two are just like typical of the Hopkinton volleyball. They make me smile when I see them and they're ready to help out to do anything and like just, you know, ask for nothing. <laughs> they do anything I ask. So it's kind of, I don't know. I'm just lucky, I guess. Thanks guys. <laughs> uh, so I'm curious, you're playing March, April this year, which is obviously a big difference from the typical fall season. Have you yeah. felt that difference at all? I mean, obviously everything's been kind of weird this year, but has it been like a drastic change for you or is it kind of like you're back into the swing of things now? Mm, kind of both. We're back in the swing, but fall is my favorite time of the year. I love the fall. And part of that is volleyball. And part of that is the weather and the season. I, and it's fun to smells like, you know, outdoor fires and leaves falling. And that's to me, volleyball season. And so it kind of weird when it's cold and gray and Brown. I mean, I'm happy to be inside the gym, mm. probably happier than in the fall, but um, it was kind of an adjustment for me personally. I don't coach clubs, so this isn't my season. This is my watching players play season. It's not my coaching season. So that's been a little bit of an adjustment for me, but I, um, I, like we said earlier, I'm just happy to be there. Uh, honestly, grateful. So absolutely. I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't care if it's January, February, August, I'll take it. Right. And that's kind of the feeling this year towards many teams and even the football team who's playing right now as well. I'm glad um, we're an indoor sport at this point. <laughs> Yes, but uh, I'm glad the football team gets to get out there, especially for the okay. seniors that are in their last year. And one thing we'll certainly miss uh, that we missed this fall was, you know, having those volleyball matches that are packed with all the fans on the oh, Friday night. No. And then they all go to the football game. It's always a great atmosphere. We certainly miss that. But it's just great. Everybody gets to get out there. You said the seniors. I mean, in particular, I'm happy that this season is happening because of the seniors. Um, they've been committed to this program since I think every one of them played on the eighth grade team and probably were going to clinics much younger than that and maybe have siblings that have played on the team. So have been a part of this program for so long and it would have just been an absolute shame for them not to be able to play and get on the court and wear their green uniforms and Heller pride one more season. So I'm, I'll say it again, like this, there's just a different feel for this entire season because we're um, just grateful. So, right. You know, you're not thinking about there's, it's almost like there's not stress. It's just, just go out there, play loose, have fun. So that's what I hope that they feel the same way. Cause that's, uh, definitely how I feel about this season. I just, I want it to be relaxed and fun and everyone to have a good time and leave, especially the seniors leaving Hopkinton high school and saying, you know what, we did it right. I'm glad we went out and I'm glad we played our final season. Absolutely. I agree with that hundred percent. It's all about getting out there and playing this year, but it's funny because at the same time, the teams that I've watched between basketball, hockey, whatever the sport may be, it's, that feeling that you just want to get out there and have fun, but also it's very competitive. These, the teams want to win. It's almost like a playoff, like mentality. Meanwhile, you're just uh, proud to get out there and have fun, but you want to win because there is no playoffs. There's no state tournament. So every game to me has felt like they're playing for a state championship. Uh, I feel like a lot of that is a team full of upperclassmen too. Like they are going to leave it all out there. I was talking to them earlier this week, I think about just being an athlete and being a competitor and wanting to win. I mean, obviously they're on a varsity sport. These guys, they, they know what they're doing and they're playing to win, whether it's, you know, playing a TVL match or whether it's scrimmaging against each other in practice, they still, they want to win. So, right. And I appreciate that. 
Absolutely. Uh, speaking of winning, you won your first two games against Holliston, who's uh, usually a very good competitor. They're a great program as well. Uh, how did those games go? Uh, obviously, they went well for you since you won, but um, did you see anything that you need to improve on? And did you see anything that uh, you were very proud of? Um, I think every game, whether it's the first game or the last game of the season, we're always finding things that we can improve on. I mean, we're never done growing. So as far as that goes, and I think that there was a, there may have been nerves on both sides of the court this week, just because first game of the season, but for us, it was so different because normally before our first match, before we play a single match, we would have had two weeks of, you know, intense competition with tournament team we would have seen probably 14 or so different teams before ever getting on the court for our first match so I feel like normally where they would be like oh yeah we're totally prepared we've done this we've played so many teams we know exactly what we're doing this time we're relying on the fact that they're experienced players and know each other so well and have played with each other for so long that they're just going to be able to step in and you know, like they haven't missed a step. So I'm curious Uh every year, it seems that this team uh, that you're this volleyball program just has players that are up and coming and there's some new faces on the roster this year. Who are some of the faces uh, that we need to look out for in the upcoming years? Uh, This program is pretty much a machine that just, constantly produces good volleyball players. Uh, Who should we look out for? Well, I think, you know what? You can't even do that because I think that pretty much they're all like that. I don't usually, this is a larger team this year than, like I said, there's more, there's more seniors on the team than I would normally have. And there's more juniors on the team than I would normally have. So just the way volleyball works where there's only six on the court, it might be harder for some of the, players to, to shine just because they're sharing time, you know, but absolutely any of them, you could pick and say, you know, this person's a great volleyball player. I mean, we probably have more, I think we have a little more height this year than we've had in past years. I think I have more jumpers and blockers this year than maybe in the last couple. Um, And that makes me, it's, it's easier for me because I, it kind of makes sense where everybody's going to fit in and play a little bit more. Um, But these are all, it's all juniors and seniors. Like you can look at last year's JV team and see this year's stars and look at, you know, this year's JV team. And you'll be like five of them will be starting for me next year. You never, you know, it could, you never know. And that's one of the great things is we are very happy that this year we're doing JV and freshman. We have oh, so both nice. those games airing on HCAM as well. Um, and we're going to do that in the future since we do have a great camera situation in the uh, gymnasium. We're going to have a lot of the JV freshman games on, but we're getting a glimpse of those teams this year, which is great. And uh, you keep doing a great job and producing great teams every year that make uh, big playoff runs. And I'm sure there's many more to come, uh, but I'm curious. So we had this COVID-19 lockdown. Everybody was pretty much shut down from doing anything. What did you do during the COVID-19 lockdown? Did you drop any volleyball strategies? Well, you know what? I actually caught up on quite a few television programs, to be honest, during COVID. Um, And I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how I'm going to replace Mary Bransfield, who we miss very much this season. Oh, that's Um, true. Yes. It's so true. Um, But no, I think I did have uh, some time to think about volleyball. Uh, Going back to Mary, I have a, we do have a new assistant for a couple of days a week and it's a blast from the past name. I don't know if you remember Renee Cooprider from our. Yes, absolutely. That are state champ team so she's helping out this year i believe Um, i nicknamed her the matrix because she was diving all over the court maybe uh also i I have the same sub varsity coaches with um emma sweet apple with jv1 and tim pacific jv2 and mike miller has the middle school team so um is there a coaching limitation with volleyball i know some sports they had a limitation on how many coaches you could have on the sideline 
Oh yeah. Well, during COVID, how many people can sit on the bench for you? Um, and actually during the regular season too, there is a number, but we've never come that close. So oh, okay. I never really worried about it, but this year it's three coaches or a coach and two managers, but I don't, I don't have managers this year. So. Right. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of the managers uh, got taken away. Graduated. They graduated. Ah. Could you have managers or because some sports couldn't, it was a restriction. They, they couldn't. Really um, yes, we can. We can. It would just take up one of the seats on the back. Like you only have so many seats. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. We're looking forward to the season this year and it seems like a great uh, team out there and we should have some great competitive games coming up. It's all pretty much TVL large rivals. So we're really looking forward to it, but thanks for joining us. Thank you. And Thanks, Cassie and Caden. I'm glad you stayed on. It's awesome to see you both in person here. Good to see you too. Thank you so much. Okay.